Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Another year of photo editing is coming to an end. And after months of extensive testing, we are now ready to count down the top five raw editors for 2022. While having many options for raw editing is nice, it does make it difficult to navigate this very crowded market. So that's why we make this video. As always, do stick around till the end of the video where we will do a slideshow comparison of all the results so you can be the final judge on which raw editor suits you best. But before we go through the list, let's quickly run through the criteria for judging, which has slightly been modified this year. So the criteria is as follows. First is the quality of raw processing. This is the most important quality of a good raw editor. Adjustments should look pleasing out of the box, smartly targeting the right tones. Unlike past years, this year only raw files will be considered to make comparisons easier. Second is local adjustments capability. This covers the editor's ability to create precise masks that allow you to target specific parts of an image for a more refined edit. Third is an intuitive user interface. The raw editor should be easy to understand without requiring a manual. Fourth is other features. We will consider any other feature that enhances the raw editing experience. And that includes photo management, HDR merging, noise reductions, and others. Unlike in years past, price will not be considered. Again, this is to make comparisons easier. The focus will solely be on the performance of the raw editor. So let's get right into this. At number five is Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo costs 99 USD one time payment and 199 US dollars with extensions. I'm quoting the sale price. The price will be higher when it's not in sale season. The last price before the sale was 389 one time payment for all the extensions and the main editor. Luminar Neo was launched just this year in February. So why did it make it to the list? Well, the interface is pleasing to the eye, not too many controls to confuse the user, and it's very simple to navigate. Compared to previous versions, the processing speed is now much faster, which enhances the user experience. Second, Luminar Neo has pleasing tone adjustments, which target the right tones while maintaining excellent color and contrast across all its adjustments. The third reason is its AI tools. Its AI tools do really make enhancing an image very simple. For example, with its enhanced panel, one slider is all you need to make an image come alive. Luminar also has a sky replacement feature, which really does work. And as far as I know, it's the best implementation out there in raw editing. Another useful AI tool is its bokeh. This feature, unique to Luminar Neo, creates a depth map from a 2D image, which allows for realistic bokeh, which works better than simply blurring the background, as you can see in this demonstration. The big upgrade to Luminar Neo, though, from older versions of Luminar, is its improvement to mask selection with the innovative Mask AI. With one click, it automatically scans for the objects in the scene and allows for masks to be automatically generated for each object. These AI-based masks are integrated nicely with its masking brush as well. In mid-2022, Luminar enhanced its feature set with six extensions, which include HDR Merge, which is my favorite extension, AI noise reduction, AI upscaling, focus merging, and background removal. Unfortunately though, it also enhanced the price. And as I mentioned, without the sale, all the extensions cost 389 US dollars. So what are the drawbacks for Luminar? Why is it only at number five? The main flaw with Luminar is its masking. Its AI mask does make frequent errors that need correction. 
And in order to correct it, you need to use its masking brush, which unfortunately does not support edge detection. And that makes it very, very difficult to create a precise mask. I've also noticed that its local adjustments have limited dynamic range as its layers don't operate as native raw. Also, you have to take care with its adjustments as it has more tendency than others to produce unnatural color and halos. Finally, in terms of photo management, Luminar Neo is the most limited on this list. For example, you cannot rate via star rating nor a color rating. You can only filter via favorites or rejected. At number four is On One Photo Raw 2023. On One Photo Raw costs 99 US dollars and it was released in October 2022. So why is it ranked higher than Luminar Neo? In terms of raw processing, On One produces color which is consistently more natural looking than Luminar and less prone to halos in my view. It has very solid sliders and that includes its shadows and highlights. As for local adjustments, on one has the most comprehensive array of tools of any raw editor for local adjustments, starting with its latest Super Select AI, which was released in On One 2023. Super Select AI makes it easy to create precise masks via pointing and clicking. This augments the very capable Perfect Brush, which has excellent edge detection. Do note that you need to adjust the tolerance to make the tool more responsive. I have to thank certain viewers who pointed this out when I complained the tool was too sensitive and unresponsive. On One also boasts an excellent Quick Mask AI, which allows you to create masks simply by doodling on parts of an image and indicating which ones are to be included or excluded from the mask. It really works and it's my favorite way to create masks in On One. Finally, On One is the only raw editor to have a refined tool to further improve a mask after it has been created. Aside from masking, On One has made substantial improvements to its feature set in 2022, and that includes no noise AI, noise reduction, Resize AI for image upscaling, and the latest Tack Sharp AI for AI-based image sharpening. Luminar, though, is not resting on its laurels and released similar AI-based tools in 2022. I'll do a comparison on the quality of each of these AI tools in a separate video, so watch out for that. Finally, another advantage of On One Photo Raw is it includes a more complete photo management feature and it supports folder management, album management, star rating and color rating, metadata and file name search, and many more. And Luminar cannot match this functionality. So when should you get Luminar Neo over On One Photo Raw? Get Luminar Neo over On One Photo Raw if you prefer an easier editing workflow as Luminar has the simpler interface but also less features. Get Luminar if you don't require precise masks because it mostly relies on global adjustments and its masking doesn't have any edge detection. Do check out if you like Luminar's look in terms of its colors and its overall image quality. Get Luminar if you don't need photo management features. Get Luminar if you need AI tools like sky replacement and bokeh effect, which Luminar does quite well. Get On One Photo Raw over Luminar Neo if you prefer more natural colors. Get On One Photo Raw if you need a tool that allows for precise masking because On One's masking tools are the most comprehensive among this list. Get On One Photo Raw if you need photo management features. And get On One Photo Raw if you don't mind a steeper learning curve as On One Photo Raw's interface is a little bit more complicated. At number three is DxO Photo Lab 6. DxO Photo Lab 6 costs 219 US dollars, and the latest version 6 was released in October 2022. So, why is it ahead of On One? I believe it has superior performance in essential areas. 
its raw processing produces more vibrant images than on one and it's excellent at recovering color even in very badly exposed areas in terms of adjustments i find dxo's tools to be more effective for example its shadow slider accurately targets the darker areas and leaves the brighter areas mostly unaffected which in my opinion is the correct behavior for a shadow slider on one's shadow adjustment has a tendency to hit the midtones and highlights as you can see here in addition to the shadows the same goes for the blacks adjustment dxo's black slider brings back detail better than on one's own black slider on one's black slider just reduces the contrast and i don't really like the look of on one's adjustment dxo's haze adjustment as well branded clear view works better than on ones in my opinion with a more pleasing look that being said on ones own haze adjustment is one of the best out there as well but i just prefer dxo's clear view adjustment finally i've established in other videos that dxo d prime xd has the best noise reduction in the industry and it also outperforms the very capable on one no noise ai in terms of local adjustments DxO masking brush, despite its flaws, which I will discuss later, has very reliable edge detection. Its local adjustments have great dynamic range and also support masking operations similar to on one, wherein you can copy masks between layers and invert the mask. For those who want even simpler masking, DxO offers control points and a newer one called control lines. Control points let you create a circular mask easily by simply pointing and clicking. The mask is created by analyzing the luminance and color characteristics of the clicked point. And you can adjust the mask's characteristics through sliders. Finally, while on one's interface is not difficult by any stretch, DxO has the simpler, better designed interface in my view. So some drawbacks of DxO Photo Lab 6, processing may at times be unnaturally colorful. So when it comes to a natural color, you can see here an example of that. If you're not careful, the image might actually look worse because of the way DxO renders color. The masks from the brush spills over and does not reflect the actual selection. So here's an example of the masking spillover. This does affect usability because you cannot actually see whether the masking was done correctly or not. So get on one photo roll over DxO Photo Lab 6 if you prefer a low price and on one photo raw does provide the best value out there in raw editing. You prefer natural colors produced by on one's raw processing. You prefer the precise masking tools of on one and I believe they're masking tools is superior to DxO's and that includes the quick mask AI, super select AI, line mask, perfect brush and its refined tools. Get on one as well if you value things like HDR, sky replacement or portrait AI. These features are not supported by DxO Photo Lab 6. Get DxO Photo Lab 6 over on one photo raw if you don't mind paying double the price of on one. You prefer the vibrant colors produced by DxO's raw processing. Get DxO as well if you prefer a simpler and more elegantly designed UI. And get DxO if you like the masking tools of DxO. And that includes the brush, control point, and control line. Finally, get DxO if you find the quality of its premier tools useful and these include Clearview, Dehaze, D-Prime XD for noise reduction, and Micro Contrast. And if you find these really useful and much better than On One's offerings, as I do, then do get DxO Photo Lab 6. At number two is Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom costs 120 US dollars a year subscription, is the industry standard in raw editing. Lightroom comes out ahead of DxO because its adjustments produce more natural looking color, better contrast, and finer detail than DxO's adjustments. 
All of Lightroom's adjustments are excellent in its own right. And that includes its clarity adjustment, texture, dehaze, denoise. They're all very effective and work as expected. In late 2021, Lightroom zoomed ahead of its competition with AI-based masking, which includes select subject and select AI. So while AI masking is not unique to Lightroom, I find that its technology is more accurate and really helps reduce the need for excessive brushing. In addition, Lightroom complements its AI masks very well with a very effective masking brush, which includes edge detection. And its brush is fast, accurate, and unlike DxO, actually reflects the area being selected. Both the AI-based and masking brush work seamlessly together and is very well implemented. Of course, Lightroom has the best photo management feature in raw editing, and it supports the import of thousands of photos into a catalog, which you can rate, search, add folders or albums, you name it. When it comes to photo management, Lightroom does it all. And that brings us to number one, Capture One Pro. Capture One Pro costs 300 US dollars lifetime or 24 US dollars per month subscription. So why is Capture One at number one? Capture One takes the lead because of a few reasons. First, superior image quality produced by its raw processing. The raw processing in Capture One, to my eyes, produces the most pleasing, true-to-life color of any raw editor on the list. The processed images look great out of the box and reduces the need for extensive tweaking. Capture One has the best shadow and blacks adjustments in raw editing, in my opinion. Not only do these adjustments target the correct tones more accurately than any competitor, it is also the best at recovering detail where detail doesn't seem to exist. The rest of Capture One's raw tonal adjustments are very competent and in my view, on par with Lightroom's offerings. I also think that Capture One's local adjustments are the best and that's because I think it makes it easier than its competitors to create precise masks. The standout tool here is its magic brush, which with one click will mask areas of similar characteristics based on an adjustable tolerance level. It's my favorite tool to use for masking. Its brush is also my favorite to use. The edge detection is fast, accurate, and unlike some competitors, the selected area is properly depicted by the displayed mask. Finally, I find Capture One's layers implementation to be the best organized and best designed among all the editors on this list. It's the easiest to understand, and that goes for its overall UI and navigation. I think it's the simplest, most organized among all raw editors. In 2022, Capture One added the ability to merge HDR and panoramas, which further enhances its very comprehensive feature set. So get Adobe Lightroom over Capture One Pro if you work with both RAW and JPEG file types. The JPEG processing in Lightroom is much better than Capture One Pro as I've shown in other videos. Get Adobe Lightroom if you rely on the Lightroom ecosystem of add-ons and plugins. Get Lightroom as well if you need a fully featured mobile app. Adobe Lightroom's mobile app is the best out there and far surpasses Capture One's iPad app. However, get Capture One over Adobe Lightroom if you find its premium price acceptable, you prefer the true-to-life color produced by Capture One's raw processing, get Capture One if you work primarily in raw, and get Capture One if, like me, you prefer the masking tools like its magic brush over the AI-based masking of Lightroom. So those were the top five editors. Now let's watch a slideshow comparison of the edited results so you can get an idea on how each raw editor handles various types of images. To make comparisons fair and easy, we applied similar editing methodology for each raw editor.
So I hope you enjoyed that slideshow comparison. Congratulations to all the raw editors who made it to the list. As you've seen, each editor is capable of producing outstanding results. But to all of you watching, did you agree or disagree with my conclusions? I'd like to hear from you. Did I miss any editor out? Do let me know in the comments. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to help keep the videos coming. And we're really proud of this video because we worked so hard to make this comparison as thorough as it is. And we're looking forward to the next video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.